Good afternoon, everybody. It is Sunday, August 25th, and it has been a long time since I've given you an update on my Leela avocado tree. I live just outside of Wilmington, North Carolina, in Zone 8A. And for those of you who are familiar with growing avocado trees, avocado trees are not typically hardy to Zone 8. They are a tree for much warmer climates. They like strong Zone 9s, Zone 10s, and Zone 11s. They don't do particularly well with frosts and freezes. Mexican avocados do handle frosts and freezes when they're mature fairly well. And here I want to show you a little overview of my house. This is the side of the house. So you can kind of see what it looks like. And this avocado tree is planted right up against the house. And the reason why is because my house is south facing and it creates a very strong microclimate because of the radiant heat of the brick. So I purchased this avocado tree back in July of 2018 and I received it on July 28th. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay a video quickly so you can see exactly what this tree looked like when I received it a mere 13 months ago. And the reason why I selected a Leela avocado is it's one of the cold hardiest known varieties. At the time I bought it, it was noted to be the second most cold hardy variety of avocado where mature trees have survived freezes into the mid to low teens in the 13 to 15 degree range. And in a perfect world, that is zone eight hardy because my average lows every year is around 10 to 15 degrees. However, uh, that is only for a mature tree. The cold hardiness are for trees with calipers that are six to 10 inches or greater. And you can pretty clearly see the caliper of this tree is only around an inch or so. So it is going to need a significant amount of winter protection in order to survive the winter. Now I selected the Leela avocado as my variety of choice for one very specific reason. You may be asking yourself, well, if this is only about the second cold hardiest avocado, why wouldn't you pick one that's even more cold hardy? There are ones out there that are more cold hardy. Uh, well, the reason why is because this is a semi-dwarf variety. So this tree can easily be maintained around five to 10 feet tall. And that is the benefit of this variety because it is so much warmer up against my house than it is out in the yard. If this tree were a non-dwarfing type of avocado, it could, get absolutely it could get absolutely enormous. The tree could get to 20 or 30 feet tall. The roots could burrow pretty deeply underneath the foundation and it could really cause a little bit of structural uh, damage to the home as well as make it so large that it would be impossible to uh, protect due to its size. I should be able to maintain this tree about twice to maybe three times the size as it is now, which will allow me to wrap the trunk. It will allow me to add Christmas lights, uh, incandescent Christmas lights wrapped around the trunk to add a few additional degrees of protection. And when you factor in all of those things that I can do to protect a tree of this size, I can kind of make my zone 8A in this microclimate up to a 9A with the additional degrees of protection that I can provide. What's been really impressive to me is how much this little tree has grown in such a short period of time. I planted this tree in ground this year on March 30th, March 30th, 2019. And I'm also going to overlay a video on top of this so you can see exactly what it looked like at the time of planting. Right now, it has grown probably about two to three times the size and bushiness, and the tree looks absolutely wonderful. I actually was able to get about a dozen avocados set, uh, pollinated by hand and set on this tree over the course of the year. However, because it was the first year that I planted the tree, it was also trying to grow a root system at the same time, and it could not hold on to the fruit, and it dropped them once they got to be anywhere from a dime to a quarter in size. But it is nice to know that this variety of avocado is self fertile, you can pollinate it with a mascara brush, and it will make fruit the very first year. It was just too much for it to overcome when I factored in the 
root growth that had to happen, uh, and the transplant shock. So the last thing I want to do is take you on a walk around of the tree. You can see how absolutely lush and beautiful the tree is. The leaves are very, very nice. I have a stake here, not, not to support the tree. Uh, it's just training it to grow upright by pulling it in the upright direction because I still want the, <clears throat> the wind to blow the tree around because that is how trees establish thicker branches by dealing with the wind. But you can see it's very healthy. It's looking very strong. And this variety for me flowered in January. Uh, I kept it in the container the first year, and I recommend that everyone does that in marginally cold climates, even in zone nine. Grow it out the first year in containers to uh, thicken up the caliper and get it a little bit stronger and see how the tree behaves. But you can see all the new growth that it's putting out, and it really does look tremendous. And I am extremely happy with this variety. Planting it high, like I did in the planting video, that I will link to above, I think really helped because we get very heavy rains here in North Carolina. And uh, you can see that the drainage in my sandy soil is excellent and it's really enjoyed being planted where it is. I have uh, hardwood mulch around it, but I always make sure not to mulch exactly around the base. You always want to, uh, you never want to leave the mulch right up against the base because that could, uh, the mulch does break down over time and having wet mulch that is decaying right up along the tree trunk could make the branch or could make the trunk itself rot. But this trunk looks great. It's very firm. It's very hard. So that's good, strong, hard wood in there. And that tree is not going anywhere. So there you go, everybody. I wanted to take this time to give you a little overview on the progress of this beautiful Lila avocado tree. This is an absolutely wonderful, healthy, strong growing semi dwarf variety. So if you live in a borderline cold zone and you can create your own extra warm microclimate, this may be a variety for you that you can try planting in ground. It's going to be very difficult for me in zone 8A. I'm really trying the strength of this tree and I'm not sure if it's going to survive its first long cold winter here uh, just outside of Wilmington, North Carolina. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to document how I intend on protecting the tree to insulate it and give a few degrees of protection over the winter. Because if I can keep this tree alive in this, uh, in this condition as such a small tree in zone 8A, uh, you may be able to too if you live in a slightly warmer climate and you're worried about planting an avocado tree in your yard but you've always wanted one. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for future updates and more videos like these. I really appreciate your viewership and I hope to see you all again next time.